Hello wet shavers, welcome back to MC Shaving for another Shave America video. Today's state is Wyoming, and you heard in the opening credits the state song, Wyoming, Where I Belong. Now, Wyoming is the leading producer of coal in the United States, accounting for 40% of the nation's total coal production. The eight largest U.S. coal mines are all in Wyoming's Powder River Basin. Back in 1872, Yellowstone, the majority of which lies in Wyoming, was designated the first national park in the nation. Now, Old Faithful is a cone geyser located in Yellowstone National Park. It was named in 1870 during the Washbourne Langford Doan Expedition. Old Faithful is a highly predictable geothermal feature. The geyser will shoot between 106 to 185 feet in the air, approximately every 90 minutes. The eruption will last for approximately 290 seconds each time, dispensing an average of 6,000 gallons. Now, between 1983 and 1994, an 11-year run, there were four probes that took the temperature and... Uh, in each probe was measured to the same depth. The average recorded temperature was 244 degrees Fahrenheit or 118 degrees Celsius. Now, due to its hot temperature, the geyser was used in the early days to clean laundry. So garments were placed in the crater and ejected, thoroughly washed when the eruption took place. Here is a pic of Old Faithful. Don't get too close to that. You may get burned, but it's really cool to see. I mean, people were taking an awful risk throwing their clothes in the geyser. What happens if they plugged it up? Do they have a big earth plunger? <laughs> but anyway, today's state scents are campfire, winter air, and mint. So I chose to go with mint for today's shave. And we are going to use Cremo. This is the refreshing mint. Now there is menthol in this. So we're gonna go with that shave cream. We are also gonna use a new pre-shave oil. I got this a while ago, but I haven't used it yet. And this is from Mountaineer brand. And this is actually Cool Mint pre-shave oil. So we're gonna use this for the first time as a pre-shave. And uh, the hardware we are going to use uh, for the first time on camera since I had the video, the Naked Armor Wood Razor. So uh, we had this all treated with mineral oil. If you watched my um, uh, video where I showed you how to care for your razors. And this is a three-piece razor. Inside, we're going to use a ASCO blade. This is the fourth shave on that blade. And then we are also going to mix it up using the Omega Bore Brush with the orange band. For the post-shave, we're going to treat it with some Thayer's. This is lavender. We're going to use some mentholated Duke Cannon Aftershave Balm. Then we're going to top it off with some Aqua Velva Ice Sport Aftershave. So we've got a real blue cooling uh, theme going on. And we're going to mix it up in the <laughs> blue uh, travel bowl. Now, in case you guys don't know this, um, this actually is a pet bowl. It's a portable water bowl or feed bowl. And the notches in the bottom are used to make the animals eat slower. So this is great for whipping up shave creams and shave soaps because the nodules in the bottom really agitate the lather and get it to foam. Uh, now there is a, a little heart-shaped um, opening here, which is usually what, where a clip goes and you can clip this onto the dog's lead and that way you can carry it with you and you don't lose it. Or you can just fold it up and put it in a like a pack or something. Uh, but that's the origin behind these. So we have a wet bore brush. I'm just going to re-wet it a little bit. It's been soaking. And we're going to get to whipping up the lather. Mm. 
Wyoming. Some good stuff on Wyoming. We'll share a little bit of it uh, as we go deeper into the shave. I can smell the menthol. It is really popping. One of the things with Cremo soaps is um, you really get the scent once you add water. Uh, I just wish they had a little bit more uh, thickness to it, I guess, the staying power. Now, I'll have to judge during this video because I, I remember shaving with the mint in the past and the mint was really good. Some of the other ones, like, um, that come in the tube, by the way, like the uh, mango and the lavender, you know, some of the uh, other scents, like the bourbon, they're not as, I would, I would say, thick or, uh, you know, they, they, they don't tend to dissipate, but it's just that they're different for some reason. Now, the shave stick that I did, that was good. That shaved really good. And I haven't shaved with the mint in a while, so we're going to use it for this state as we whip up here. Coming along nicely. We're getting some peaks, but we still have some bubbles in there, so I think we're going to hit it with a touch more water. Just going to put a little bit more in the bowl. Uh, I watched uh, Chris's video when he did the blind shave. He did pretty good. He did pretty good. I know that uh, the Red Island Shaver uh, has some challenges. Just Lance uh, has challenges in seeing. So that kind of is the latest thing going around. I don't know if I'm going to do a blind shave, but uh, I haven't watched it yet. I haven't watched the whole video yet. Maybe the first eight minutes. But I know that Kevy just released a video. Because uh, Chris tagged him in, in his uh, blind shave video. And they're trying to, I guess, one-up each other. So there's been blind shaves done. Geofatboy did one. But Chris took it to a new extreme where he actually did a full 100% shave where he put the blade in blindfolded and everything. And then <laughs> I, I think Kevy's doing a one-up on that because he, he actually entered the bathroom wearing a blindfold. <laughs> so he really started from square one. So that, that seems interesting. I'd like to watch that and see how that goes. All right, I think we're getting a great amount of lather. I mean, it's really good. There's still some bubbles in there. But we're gonna let that sit for a moment. We'll let those bubbles dissipate a bit. Just gonna wet the face a little bit there. Get it prepped. Now we're gonna try some of this Mountaineer brand Cool Mint pre-shave oil. And I dropped the cap right into the water. That's all right. Now this does run out, so. I don't know if there's any menthol in this or not, but. Hmm, yeah, you could definitely smell the mint. It's not overpowering, not strong. But I'm glad I get to use the uh, pre-shave oil because the naked armor razor head is a uh, is a bit aggressive. Now I'm also not going to shave my goatee. I'm going to let the goatee the goatee start to grow in because I ride motorcycles and it is motorcycle season. I did put the motorcycle on the road a few weeks ago. Uh, I haven't had a chance to get out and ride it yet. Um, mainly because the last few days it actually has snowed here, believe it or not, in April. And they're still saying that it could snow up to next week. I, I don't know. I am getting a little cooling. I am getting a little cooling, so there must be a touch of menthol. Now that's a very small sample bottle, but there's got to be menthol in there. All right. Uh, we have a good lather, but see, this is what I'm talking about. If you could see in there the bubbles, I mean, I could sit here and I could mix this all day. I mean, if I add more water, I, I may produce more lather, but I don't want to produce more lather. I just want to thicken up what I have. So maybe I just need to spend more time mixing this. I don't know if any of you uh, shave with Cremo, you can let me know if you have a special process. Um, 
maybe it's just me not mixing it for long enough. I, I like the soap. It's good, but we're going to go with what we got there. Now this definitely has menthol, this uh, refreshing mint. And the last thing that I want is for... See, I do have some things around the goatee here so you can see some blemishes. So it's probably a good thing I'm not shaving the goatee today anyway. It does feel uh, a bit thin when it goes on, very airy. But nonetheless, it, it should do the job. We're just going to scoop up some more. I made sure that I put extra cream in the bottom of the bowl. So that way uh, we just have a lot of foam. Hopefully that will keep it from dissipating. seems to be okay. A little watery for some, shavable for others. You know, you give and take with the cream that you use. It is a budget shave cream. They're inexpensive. So we're going to go with that. Okay. Let's get the razor wet. Naked Armor Asco Blade ASCO. Fourth use. Let's do this. Wow, I could feel that. I could feel the blade tugging. So it's not, uh... oh, son of a gun. <laughs> oh. Well, you know what? I guess the next shave, we will uh, start the goatee. I already, I already killed it. Darn, see? That's what happens when you talk. All right. Got a hair from the brush. Clean it out of the nostrils. Okay. I guess I am going to shave my goatee area. Hopefully, I don't open any of those uh, blemishes. But I started to say that the... Uh, The razor is tugging a bit, the razor blade, so it's good enough to get by this shave, let's hope. I'm not ready to pull the plug on it yet, but I am going to dispense of it after this. Wow, I mean this head, I could really feel it. There's a lot of bleed exposure. I don't know, what do you think? You think I can save the goatee? It hasn't grown in enough, really. with those. I suppose where I shaved I could do uh, you know one of Chris's deals where I just uh, shave the outsides. But... Gotta have some hair in your face because when you're riding the motorcycle poof, a big splat bug right in the head. Now we'll shave it. It'll just look corny. And if I let it go another few days, I'll wind up going, oh, I gotta shave it. And then I just would have wasted a few days, so. We will shave it now. I could really feel this blade, man. Oh yeah. I can feel that blade tugging.
especially in this razor. Can we get through? Very light, no pressure. No pressure. Man, I would cut myself from here to Kukumagyunga, <laughs> if there is such a place. Now my skin feels very dry. I had the oil on it. Maybe if I add some water, I'll feel the residual slickness. A little bit on the neck. Barely. Barely any residual slickness, even from that oil. Now the oil was good, and I think that's what I feel, because I didn't have a ton on there, but... That face scrape removed a lot of the residual slickness and the cremo, though it did okay. Didn't leave much behind. Um, so definitely I would say shaving with a cremo, you want to uh, you want to use some balm. I'm just going to give a quick mix here in the bowl. Still got plenty of lather, but I could smell it. I smell the menthol. And by adding the water to my face, it, it refreshed it refreshed the uh, the feeling. I could feel the the cooling on the face. But anyway, let's press on. I think with the second pass, I think I'll be okay. So we're going to press on. All right. Uh, Wyoming is where you will find Devil's Tower, the United States' first ever declared national monument by President Theodore Roosevelt on September 24th, 1906. The Devil's Tower is a monolithic rock protrusion in the Black Hills mountain chain. Here's a pic of Devil's Tower. Now, Wyoming is the least populous state in the country with an estimated population of 582,600 people. However, the state was the first to grant equality to women on several occasions. During 1890, Wyoming was a vastly male-dominated frontier. In hopes to attract more women, the state extended basic democratic equality to women by granting the right to vote. The state also had the first female governor. Now, after uh, her husband died just a year into his governorship, Nellie Ross ran in a special election and won the spot easily. She was sworn in as the first woman to serve as governor in January 1925. Although she was defeated in her campaign for re-election, Ross went on to be the first female director of the United States Mint. So congrats to Wyoming for leading the way in women's right to vote, as also uh, having a woman representative in legislation. The horse on the Wyoming license plate is a legendary rodeo bronco named Old Steamboat. And lastly, the Red Desert in South Central Wyoming is home to two unique geological features. First is Kilpecker Sand Dunes, the largest living dune system in the United States. Here's a picture of some dune buggies on the sand dune. Now the second geological, geological feature in Red Desert would be the Great Divide Basin. It is an endoric basin, meaning water from participation collected there doesn't drain into any ocean directly or indirectly. What I will do is I will show you the basins that go across North America, and you're going to see a whole bunch of colored lines, and they're going to show you how each basin uh, directly or indirectly feeds into one of the major waters. And the red line that basically goes straight up and down is the Great Divide Basin. And right in the middle, you're going to see what looks like a square. And then I'm going to zoom in on that square for you so you can actually see what that basin looks like. So here's two pics. One, again, showing you the basins across North America. And the second one is going to zoom in on that little square that you're going to see right in the middle of the red basin line.
That's pretty neat. Now you would have never noticed that square from such a, a high level picture where I had the colored lines. So that's why I wanted to zoom in to actually show you that that, that basin is uh, not, not connected to any body of water. It doesn't run anywhere. Which is pretty neat, I think. All right, let's get oop, right back in the bowl. Let's get the second coat on. Very cooling. I could really feel that menthol now, that the first layer of whiskers is gone. With the warmer weather coming, menthol makes for a good shave. Oh, you could hear the, uh, the wind. A little windy here. Oop, I'm getting it all over. A little creamy. You know, it's been sitting in the bowl. Again, it's not as thick or as heavy a lather as some would like, but it does the job. It's passable shaving lather. Pretty decent for uh, for the cost, and you you know what you could always uh, do a mashup if you have like a unscented or barbershop scent or something that is um, very mild that won't contradict or interfere with whatever cremo scent you're using, like for this mint. It's menthol, but I could probably add some Mickey Lee or something like that, some better quality soap, get a thicker lather, and uh, really have a, a good lather on the face. Oh yeah, I could definitely feel that menthol. All right, there we go. Let's clean the lips. All right. I think with this razor head, I think we're gonna do two passes. So let's do a second pass. And if it starts tugging here, I'm gonna change this blade out. So there's no whiskers. And it was a pretty close shave the first time around. So, you'll hear feedback, but it shouldn't pull or tug because there's really nothing left. Yeah. I'm just trying to be careful around the lip area here. I feel it. I think I got it. Oop, dripping. Slow one, yeah, just a little bit slow one there, but I took my time so I didn't really scratch the heck out of it. See, this is what happens when I start to grow hair. I just need to make sure that I... Uh, Keep it clean, keep washing it. I didn't have acne bad as a kid, but it's a pain in the butt sometimes. Yeah, not too bad, it feels okay. Not as tugging as bad as it did. Definitely, uh, 
ready for this blade to be recycled. Now, uh, I remember there's no slickness, so I'm just going to put another layer on here just so I have something there. Because I do want to do uh, a little bit more in the neck. Now you can hear the scraping. Let me tell you, that's a, that's just the blade exposure. It's not that it's cutting anymore, it's just the skin being dragged. Yeah, it's not BBS, but it's pretty good. Pretty, pretty good. So let's do a quick rinse. <laughs> Yeah, so you can see a little bit of soap there. Yes, the more layers of soap you put on, the more slickness you get. Ooh. Very cool with the menthol. Very cool. Add the cold water. Feels good. Very cool. Let me give you some final updates for Wyoming. In the 1800s, the Oregon Trail stretched across what is now Wyoming and its neighboring states. At one particular point along the way, near modern-day Guernsey, Wyoming, immigrants carved their names into the cliff so friends and family traveling behind them would know they had survived the perilous trail, at least up until that point. The sandstone rock face became known as Register Cliff and is now recognized as a historic landmark. So here's a pic of the cliff and some close-ups of some of the carvings. Now that's pretty cool. I'd love to go see that someday. Uh, Buford, Wyoming was the smallest town in America. Don Sammons had been its only resident and owner of the town since his son left in 2008. Don decided to move closer to his son and put the town up for auction. Buford is home to one unique roadside attraction. First discovered in the 1860s by railroad, railroad workers who were laying track for Union Pacific. The tree in the rock is a skinny pine tree that appears to grow directly out of a large rock. Here's a pic of the tree in a rock. Now in 2013, the town of Buford was sold to do Vietnamese businessmen and is now officially called Findeli. Now, just in case you guys like to have a, a hoot and haw, uh, here's a, a couple interesting neat facts. I wasn't going to throw this in, but uh, we have a, a minute. So, In 1994, NASA learned that Jupiter was in some danger of being hit by an errant piece of comet. The fine folks of Green River, Wyoming, were immediately concerned for the welfare of any Jupiteritans who needed to escape. So the city officially renamed their small 5,000-foot landing strip the Greater Green River Intergalactic Spaceport as a way of welcome, welcoming these extraterrestrial immigrants. <laughs> and, you know, those of you that are hunters, I'm sure you've heard of the jackalope. Well, the jackalope has twice been nominated for recognition as the official mythical creature of Wyoming. The story of the jackalope has been traced to a pair of hunters 
in Douglas, Wyoming, who used taxidermy to graft deer antlers onto a jackrabbit carcass. And that is the birth of a jackalope. Okay then. <laughs> All right, let's go with some Thayer's Lavender. Gonna be a little generous. Mm, I love that smell. It's nice and smooth, I'm telling you. Other than a few uh, spots for a BBS, this is more than passable. And then you let the face sit, and uh, you know, in an hour or two, it'll feel even smoother. So, very efficient razor. That head is uh, very aggressive. So I'm gonna have to chuck that blade, and I just have to remember to be uh, to be mindful to use a mild blade in that razor. Okay. Duke Cannon Aftershave Balm. This has menthol in it. It comes out blue. Probably have way too much here. But it's cooling, soothing. Oh, definitely smell the menthol. Ooh. Gonna put some on the forearms too. If I have too much on my hands. All right. Oh, oh now there definitely is uh, the menthol feel there. Definitely the menthol feel. All right. Get it off the hands. For the final touches, ice sport. Let's rock it. You know what? I don't really have that much of a burn. I would say I feel the menthol more than anything, really. So that is our shave for today. Wyoming is done. On to the next state. Thanks for stopping by. Leave some comments. And if you're not a subscriber, go ahead and subscribe. In fact, click the bell. I'll let you know when the Shave America series goes to the next state, and then you could tune in and check that out. Or you can just stop by on your own and see what new videos come out. So thanks for everybody uh, for leaving some comments and, and for taking the time to watch this video. I hope you all are doing well. Stay safe, and we'll talk to you real soon. Bye-bye. Hear the mighty